Emergency Management of Incarcerated Immunohernia, a short tutorial for Discover Pediatric Surgery by Nirav Patel, Ellen Mapunda, and Hans Raj Mangre. Most inguinal hernias in children are indirect inguinal hernias that result from failure of the processus vaginalis to close. The main risk factors for indirect inguinal hernia in children are prematurity, male sex, family history, and undescended testes. In order to understand what an inguinal hernia is, some understanding of embryology is necessary. During intrauterine life, the gonads in both males and females descend from the retroperitoneal urogenital ridge. In males, this descent carries the gonad through the inguinal canal into the scrotum. During this process, a diverticulum of peritoneum is carried with the gonad. This diverticulum is known as the processus vaginalis. In females, although gonadal descent terminates in the pelvis, the ovary is anchored to the labia by the round ligament. The round ligament passes through the inguinal canal to form this point of fixation, and it too is enveloped in the diverticulum of peritoneum. The processus vaginalis should close by term, but can remain open and either remain asymptomatic during an individual's lifetime, present as a communicating or insisted hydrocele, or present as an inguinal hernia. Essentially, an indirect inguinal hernia occurs when a PPV contains intestine or other abdominal organs, whilst a hydrocele occurs when the PPV contains peritoneal fluid. Inguinal hernias in children are common and can complicate with incarceration. In incarceration, an, ab an abdominal organ has become stuck within the hernia sac. This stuck organ is usually the intestine, though it can be any other abdominal organ, such as an ovary in a female. A stuck intestine results in intestinal obstruction and should not be confused with a hydrocele, testicular torsion, uncomplicated or reducible inguinal hernia, or an undescended testicle. Parents may report an intermittent swelling in the child's groin that now fails to disappear. The onset of the swelling can be associated with pain, irritability, vomiting, constipation, and abdominal distension. Parents may also report that the groin swelling was previously soft and painless, but is now hard, painful, and red. Although much more common in males, incarcerated inguinal hernias can and do occur in females. In severe cases, you may notice erythema and edema of the skin in the scrotum or groin and blood in the stool. These are all danger signs of strangulation and are seen when the incarcerated intestine has become necrotic. Children with incarcerated inguinal hernia require specialist referral. This said, these children all require urgent resuscitation while awaiting transfer. Start by establishing intravenous access and giving appropriate resuscitation and maintenance fluids. Keep the patient warm, nail for us, and give intravenous or per rectal analgesia. Place a nasogastric tube to allow for relief of pain and respiratory distress. If required, give supplemental oxygen. Remember to always counsel the parents of your suspected diagnosis what you are doing to treat the problem, and the need for referral and surgery. Children with clinically incarcerated inguinal hernias do not require further imaging and should not be sent unaccompanied for abdominal x-ray or ultrasound as they are at high risk for acute decompensation. Remember, remember, it is not necessary to confirm the diagnosis in order to refer the patient to a specialist centre. In patients with incarceration, you can attempt to reduce the hernia by placing the child in a slight Trendelenburg or head down position, giving the child analgesia but never sedation, applying gentle traction and then medial and cranial pressure to the incarcerated bowel, whilst simultaneously stabilizing and aligning the internal and external rings. Remember, reduction should never be forceful. Never attempt reduction if there is evidence of strangulation or if you are unsure how to perform the procedure. If you fail reduction or are not comfortable to try, give analgesia and keep the patient's hips flexed while awaiting and during transfer, as this may assist in spontaneous reduction of the hernia. This can be easily achieved by placing a roll towel under the patient's pelvis. Always be aware of the possibility of an incarcerated inguinal hernia. Start early and appropriate resuscitation, 
avoid leaving the patient unattended and requesting unnecessary investigations, and refer early to avoid disastrous and unnecessary complications. Thanks for listening, and please visit the Surgeons for Little Lives website or the Discover Pediatric Surgery YouTube channel to download and share this and similar tutorials for free.